there wasn't enough room in Toyland to escape the terror that rocked Baby's cradle. To Baby, life was not a giant playpen. It was a living hell. He wasn't allowed to walk. He wasn't allowed to talk. But he was capable of it. Baby is a full-grown man trapped by three women with no way out. <laughs> the Baby, a Scotia International release. Welcome, everybody. And as you just heard my introduction to this, we are going to be talking about Baby. 1973. For those of you who don't know or haven't seen the trailer of this film, this is one of the most obscure cult classic horror films that have ever come to be. Basically about a man who is capable of being a man, but through the means of three horrible women, two sisters and a mother, basically he is kept as a baby, an infant. But that's not the whole story. This was done by director Ted Post, uh, Ab, Pol- writer Ab Polinsky. It starred Anna Jetta Comer, Ruth Roman, Mariana Hill. Um, again, uh, Todd Andrews, Susan Zenner, uh, Aaron O'Reilly. Uh, again, one of the most strangest, strangest. And, of course, Baby, done by David Mooney, as Donna said here. Manzi. Uh, Manzi, sorry. Is it David Manzi? Ah, uh, yeah, David Mandy. Yeah. Sorry. But also, well, they have his name listed as Mooney here. So, um, my bad, my audience, for giving you that wrong information. Bad, bad on me. Bad, bad raw baby. <laughs> right, bad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, this movie, it, I mean, you should just see the trailer, first of all, because the trailer will blow your mind away. But it, there's more to this movie, too, because one of these, this type of film will never be created ever again. No. This... Our, our audience nowadays, our people are too sensitive. Yes, well, this, not into the mainstream, I don't think. Well, I mean, Steve, I mean, we, you know, even like movies like, you know, uh, Human Centipede, you know, that actually would probably not even be made now once they've yeah. seen it. And we always say that after the fact, but that's because people really didn't know what they were going into or how far you could go. This is a movie that goes far in its own right. Like, it's, it goes, it crosses like a line where it's like, whoa. You know, we don't really cross that line too much. It's weird to kind of see. So, um, you know, of course. I mean, there uh, are multiple of those lines in this movie. Multiple. Yes, multiple. Multiple. Yes, you're right. I mean, yep. I mean, not only is it, you know, you have people that are playing, you know, mentally ill roles that aren't mentally ill, but you also have a undertone of baby fetishism, I would even say, in this movie as well. Um, there really is. There's also abuse, sexual abuse, done by one of the sisters in this film, too. She actually gets in the crib with baby naked, and then you have one of the other sisters that's abusive who cattle prods him. Basically, you know, baby doesn't walk. Baby doesn't talk, and that's how they keep him uh, subdued. And basically, this is a full-grown man. But what's interesting is you have the social worker in this movie. And the social worker seems like she really does care for him at first. You know, that she she has his best interest. Best interest. And she's actually called because the babysitter gets beaten by the other, uh, the other three. Because she, of course, you know, hears the baby crying. Baby gets injured. Starts breastfeeding this full-grown man. He's like... Yeah, and I'll and I'll do it again for you, my audience, especially if I'm not <laughs> just like that, you know. That's your and first kind of like, ooh, this this is the, this is <laughs> weird. yeah, that was yeah. like the what the hell moment because I mean, she had a boyfriend, so she wasn't pregnant, didn't have a kid, so she, there's no way she could possibly produce breast milk. I told milk. you, there's it, right, a baby right, fetish. I was thinking that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so um. And Janina Comer, who's basically that's who plays Anna. She's the social worker in the film. Uh, she gets called, and you know she. It's funny too because she, she, the question is, as you see in the trailer, she's like, "I just saw his name listed as baby. You know, what's his real name?" And of course, he's just a baby. And she tries to teach him to like do basic things. Tries to see how far along he is as an adult because she thinks that he is absolutely a ama- you know capable of doing a lot more. That these women just keep him subdued. And then you have the women, you know, of course, trying to block her pursuits here at every turn. And it gets to the point of where uh, Anne and her mother-in-law get together and get this, our audience. They go back and they murder the three women, the two sisters and the mother. Because, get this, spoilers, our audience. 
she wants the baby because her husband, as she explains in the film, was in a car accident, and now he has the mental capacity of a child. So she wants baby to be her husband's playmate. Yeah, and she doesn't go back to their house to kill them. They show up at her house. Her house. To get the baby back. The baby, yep. But, yeah. I mean, you know, granted, they did break and enter. I mean, granted, she did kidnap, but they broke and entered. I'd, you know, I'd stay in my ground, <laughs> Two too. Two wrongs don't make a right, Donna. <laughs> Listen here, I'm just saying. The overall you know, concept of I'm just, film. I'm just but, saying here. No, I'm no, not but, have a baby fetish, okay? I'm not have but one. Here's the here's what really got me. <laughs> Where they put the bodies. Yes, oh, they put right. them underneath the, the pool. The swimming pool. And then they made the swimming pool for the husband and the, the mom and the son, I guess, the playmate, whatever, and the mother-in-law's just, you know, happy away, you know, she's got her whole family there. Two you know? grown men that she's probably going to be... <laughs> you know that's right, where though, it was right? going. She probably you will know be. that's probably. where it's going. It was... A, it's, a, it's a film that really, really brings it... It really, like I said, it crosses the line. You have the one sister who's getting in the crib with Baby. You know, she's taking off her clothes to... Uh, to get in there with them. And it, it just, it's, it's such, you know, there's, there's so many, okay. Me and Steve have always talked about this, this, when it comes to like, uh, awkward scenes in movies, especially when you're, it's like watching a sex scene with your parents in a film. And yeah. I felt like I was doing that the whole time I'm watching this. movie. <laughs> right. Like, it's just like, Oh God, you know, it's like, I understand if there's some kind of fetish going on here, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's, it's weird. Is um, there anybody that's good in this film? There's there like is no one that's good, and there's that's no exactly one thing, because the guy will not be cured, and that's the even the more horrible part about the film, and why it would never be made today. Because you know, it it takes a view on disabled people and kind of like really like it doesn't help mindset about abuse or marital abuse or anything like that. it just kind of like goes oh don't worry about that we're just gonna have a cartoonish like you know remedy to that right. you know yeah. it, it, it it almost seems like in a way and this is why i like this film but in a way i'm like i kind of ask you know do you did you when you made this film did you take it seriously or did you kind of sit there and go yeah this is this come on it's about a grown man his baby i mean <laughs> That, right. That's that's kind of the question I would have because it's like if you did take this film seriously, you did an awful, 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 awful film. That's very, very, very um, insensitive, and I and even I'm saying that, and it's you know. It's but is very, that the the goal was to be that in, insensitive? Right, I, I, was you know, the goal to be a cartoonish take on a horror. You know, like look at this, it's about a guy. You know, that's what I'm saying. Is it? Is it meant to be like full blown serious or meant to be like kind of a comedy horror? What do you guys think? I think it's more like a comedy horror. And I don't even think of it being a horror movie. Like, I love scary movies. And the only thing scary was the fucking cattle prod. I'm like, okay, that would hurt, but. That didn't scare you, Donna, the possibility of being stuck as a baby like that? Donna doesn't walk. Donna doesn't walk. <laughs> right. And then, like, you being kidnapped and then just, you know, basically being a playmate for somebody else. I and mean, it's just. Dude, someone yeah. would kidnap me right now. I wouldn't have to pay bills, have to worry about cooking. Man, <laughs> take me. <laughs> that was a joke. But That's you know funny. what I mean. <laughs> You're just like goo goo gaga. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, goo goo gaga. But that's what I'm saying. This movie plays into a lot of insensitivity. It's kind of like when I was on, and I'm not trying to name drop here in my eyes, but the uh, jacked up movie review when we were talking about um, Deadly Nights, because uh, that film, realistically, you know, yeah, you go, yeah, that film is about an evil Santa Claus. You know, about a guy who dresses up like Santa Claus as a serial killer. What it's actually about is about a kid who sees Santa Claus murder his parents, and then he's at work, and he has PTSD, and then his boss says, put on this goddamn Santa Claus outfit before you get fired, and then he has a fucking meltdown. In today's world, that is one of the most insensitive things towards people that have PTSD. I mean, that film is definitely... It's kind of on the same level as this. You, you, You think, you know, this film is just about a grown man as a baby, but no, it's touching on some... Some like dark, yeah, dark, dark things. Yeah, do you think this was kind of because this came out in like this in 1973? 1973. I love so that. They were, 70s was super it. experimental for films, super like they were doing experimental. everything, and I feel like this is one of them. I, you know, and and the thing is, you never see another one like this. No, you don't. 
again. No, so and see, the only thing I can really kind of, I can't equate this movie to really anything else. I mean, there are some some crazy films. I mean, one of the other movies I can kind of think that kind of made me go, oh, this is creepy, was like, but not on like a horror level, was like, you know, House of Thousand Corpses, when you go down there and they're operating on all the guys and they're eating the cereal and stuff like that. That was like, oh, shit, kind of moment. But that was like a horror moment. This is like horror in the sense of like, ooh, I don't know if I should be watching this, you know? <laughs> this, yeah, is, this is horror of like, ooh, society frowns on this stuff now. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, the only one that I'm thinking of, and it really doesn't pertain to this, is the uh, the other horror. Do you guys see the uh, the People Under the Stairs movie? Oh, yeah, I love that film. I haven't. Yeah, it's film. like, but it's it not, rains, though, because they weren't, yeah, they were not, they were not disabled, so it. No, they were starved people that were, like, you know, put under the stairs, and they're, like, basically, like, zombies now. Kind of like, kind of like the zombie, like, that scene in House of Thousand Corpses where she gets thrown into the, the cage, and, the and like, all those people, like, jump on her, and you're like, whoa, what the fuck was that? And they never touch base on that at all. Right. No, they were hungry. Yeah, they were hungry. They just wanted to bite on her. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's yeah, what I'm this saying. Just, it's just a sad film. It didn't even scare me. It just made me go, like... No. Oh, it, made me, it made me laugh. <laughs> it, 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 it's one of those films, like I said, when I watched it, it was like watching a sex scene with my parents. But when I watched it a second time, the whole time I'm sitting there just going, God, this guy. I mean, I want to know, did he sit there and like, and I'm not making fun of him, but I just want to sit there. Was he like watching a baby? He like sat there. He's like, I need you to teach me your ways. <laughs> I need you to teach me right. how to be a baby. So, Character someone, actor. He, someone I, bring me a kid. I didn't think his <laughs> performance was bad well he didn't speak the whole time so he got props on that but it, yeah he did he said Mama, and, you know like oh, that was and stuff yeah well yeah i'm just saying like he didn't like have full-on conversations he, here's like there the... were small bits and pieces and you can tell the cry over for the baby was a cry over you know yeah a voiceover but out of all the acting and I hate to say it, like some of the acting really did suck. The sisters, I couldn't stand. Their acting was fucking horrible. So the like, mom. We could take them to the circus. Yeah. They want them in that freak show. Are you saying the you mom. want to do that to your brother? I'm saying it'd be better. Yeah. <laughs> the mom. The mom. She nailed that fucking role. Yeah, the mom was the best actress in the movie. I thought yes. yeah. she was good. Yeah. Especially when she walks up to him and she's all like, you little bastard. <laughs> yeah, so like... During the movie, you know, I looked her up. And have you guys seen some of her work from, like, when she was younger? Like, yeah. I mean, this woman was drop-dead gorgeous for the time. Mm. Yeah, she was on uh, Strangers on a on a Train, I believe. And, yeah, she was yeah. very, very pretty lady. Yeah, she so was a very prominent have... actress for a while. Yeah, so yeah, it's weird to have her just be this, like, you know, kind be, of weird. That happens, yeah, though. I mean... looking woman type of just, like, gaunt-looking face. <laughs> She, and yeah, it was like a Mommy Dearest vibes, too. It was it, just weird. That, and, and it also, she kind of gave me the vibes off of Grease. Um, what was her name? Not Sandy. Not Frenchie. Help me out here, guys. The one that was always the troublemaker. Rizzo. Oh, Rizzo. Yeah, Rizzo. She gave me Rizzo vibes. Like, literally, like, if you look at her face and, like, her Rizzo back in that time, like, it almost... They could have been daughter and mother and daughter at that time. Yeah, I can kind of like, see that. Yeah. But overall, so we, we all kind of agree this film would never be made today. No. But it was made. So getting it's over that kind prospect. Of it, it's kind of interesting. Getting over that prospect, the acting was, you know, semi. We'll say good. I'd give it what? Whatever. Like five. five. Yeah. Five. Yeah, I was going to say five. Um, the story. I mean, we got to put it up there, guys. I mean, I, I, I give it at least on the horror genre. I'd put it up there really high. Uh, not well, I guess mind thrillers, I guess you could say. I'd put it up there pretty high because it's a film. If you want to see a messed up film, this is a messed up film. So I would yeah. up there and maybe like, you know, I'd give it a 6.5 when it comes to like story plot as a movie itself. Mm -hmm. Four. Ooh, really? <laughs> Really, because I, I don't think it's a film that needs to be seen. It's insanely insensitive. It's insanely, it, it, it's not a story like, you know, we're, we're in this this type of work. So it's kind of, you know, of course, we're going to see a film like this. Of course, you know, we, we watch, you know, we watch all these kind of films. because We want to see all this, all the, the perspectives that they had in all these different eras. In the 70s was like the goddamn Wild West with some of these topics. 
And like Donna so, said, yeah, like there are care. some lines that were just terrible. Yeah. Really so. Bad. Yeah. So you know, overall, the film I would give it a four. I think it's I just think it's an okay film. I just think it's as a controversial film. You know, yeah, I can see why people like it, especially you baby fetish people. Yeah. Well, see, she didn't keep him as a baby as a baby a baby fetish. They kept him as a baby. No, I'm saying the film like panders to baby fetish. It does, but it comes out and says that the reason why she was abusing him is because all of her husbands hu- husbands left. And it makes me wonder, do they really leave or just see her psychotic side? It and makes, then she me, makes you think, huh? You're like, I mean, hmm, incest, maybe I should the, go this it route. Does psychotic just push you to being like, you know, the torture and the incest and all this other stuff happening. Like, there's something else to that. I don't think it's just your yeah. husband's leaving. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was some... Well, true. There was probably some deep, dark, you know, baby fetishes. <laughs> baby fetish, or she made it to where there was a man in her life that could never leave her. Yeah, kept him as a baby the whole yeah. time. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, but what would you guys give the film? You heard my take. I give it. I give it as a film itself. I give it like a four. Horror wise, whatever. Mind thriller, six point five. What would you guys give it overall? Movie oh, overall. Seen. Movie overall about a five and the horror seven because it's it, it gets to you like if you sit and think about it the psycho psychological toll it would take it it could get to you. That is so true, yeah. Because it's not a movie you want to like reflect on. And I didn't even watch the credits. As soon as it was over, I was like, okay, and we're done with that. Like I didn't want to see <laughs> like kind of forget You're, that never I love, happened. I, I want you guys to start texting me when you curse my names while watching these films because I want you guys to be like, <laughs> what did you have me watch? Because the reason I, Luke's, uh, Luke's not on this stuff is he was like, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> I get it. I get it. It's not for everyone, okay? You know, it's not dedicated like us, our audience. Just kidding. <laughs> By the way, uh, late happy birthday for Luke out there, our audience. Um, but this film itself, yeah, I think it's I think it's a film that's definitely has. I can see why it has a cult following, a very probably small cult following. Um, I came across this film when I was doing our uh, 70s compilation into obscure movies, and I was like, what the f*** is this? There's a movie about a man, baby? What? You know, because, of course, I love It's Alive. That's one of my favorite films. That's another great (laughs) one, too. That's another great baby-ish, in another way, film. So I say they should make It's Alive, Rosemary's Baby. They should remake all that with a big man baby like they did in this movie. <laughs> Rosemary's Baby mixed Rosemary's with Bill baby. baby. Right. Yeah, Rosemary's oh. Man Baby. I went Rosemary's Baby versus the baby. Where's that oh. one at? <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> Just get murdered. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, I that's that's gonna be baby our audience, nineteen seventy-three. So that's gonna be this let's talk about it. And of course we were talking about baby nineteen seventy-three. So uh, we will say goodbye everyone. Make sure you listen, like, and subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, and make sure you support the show on Jagged Tooth Clothing clothing at eBay. And have a good night, everybody.